Hey y'all, it's Adila and Ben, and we hope that wherever you are, you're getting on with the year well, and you're happy, and you're healthy. Today's episode is a fun one. We're both going to be doing the MBTI personality test. You do not want to miss this. All right, so first of all, we'll talk a little bit about what the MBTI personality test actually is. Ben, do you know what it is? Uh, before actually taking the test, no, I only heard about it, uh, just the abbreviation, but I didn't yeah. know what it was. I know exactly. it's actually quite popular, like a lot of it's quite, it's one of the more popular personality tests. So the MBTI actually stands for the Myers-Briggs Personality Type Indicator. And it's essentially a questionnaire that you do. And it's a self-report inventory, which is designed to identify a person's personality type strengths and their preferences. Today, the MBTI inventory is actually one of the most widely used psychological instruments in the world. Wow, that's amazing to hear. It gives you great confidence as well that when you're taking the test, you're going to get pretty accurate results. I don't know. Is it accurate? Because Mm. I've actually taken it a few times at very different time points. And the first time I did it, I got one particular result. The second time I did it, one of the letters changed. And then I actually recently did it a third time before this episode. And I got the same answer as the first time I did it. So today we'll do the test on the show and we'll see whether the results are again the same. I think a lot of it depends maybe on your mood. I think so. Just going off what you just said, I mean, it may be having the most recent time when you took it, it's probably a similar mood to when you first took it. Yeah. The second time, you may have been having an off day. But it wasn't like a massive, no, a massive change. change. It was, okay. I think, one of the first letters, whether you're more introverted or you're more extroverted. I must have been feeling exceptionally social that particular <laughs> week. I don't know. So I think despite the popularity of the test, some of the psychologists around the world actually criticize it. And a few months ago, I think there was an issue in the media where a psychologist said that the Myers-Briggs test is unscientific, meaningless, and even calling it bogus. But there are others who take a milder view on the test. Many personality psychologists consider the MBTI to be a somewhat valid measure of some important personality characteristics, but obviously we have to acknowledge the limitations of the test. Definitely. I think it's, well, when you're taking the test, because you're looking for a personality trait, you got to be careful that you answer these questions uh, truthfully and not how you would like to see yourself. I think mm. as well, that probably would influence a lot of the outcomes. Yeah, that's true. And you've really got to think within, like look inwards. Yeah, definitely. So what's the backstory, Ben? Who Who is Myers-Briggs? So Catherine Cook Briggs and her daughter, Isabel Briggs Myers, they've always been a keen observer of people and their differences. This work was inspired by the work of psychologist Carl Jung and his theories. So for example, the concepts of introversion and extroversion. So the mother and the daughter devoted their lives to developing the type indicator. They were hoping to help people understand their tendencies and help them choose the most appropriate job for themselves. So the test actually uses 93 questions. So when you do the test, you answer a series of questions and you essentially rate it on a scale of, do you strongly agree with the statement or do you strongly disagree with the statement? Where on the scale do you fall? Mm. And at the end of this test, you actually end up with four different letters, a combination of possible, possible and yeah. Yeah, possible letters. So introvert versus extrovert, you either get an I or an E, whether you're more intuitive versus sensory, an N or an S letter, whether you think versus feel, T and F, and whether you judge versus perceive, which will give you a J or a P letter. And based on the combination of these traits that people fall into, the test ultimately assigns you one of 16 labels, such as INTJ, ENFP, et cetera, et cetera. That's really interesting. I mean, trimming down an original test of 93 to a subcategory, it makes me wonder what if... How much your answers would vary or your outcome would vary. Could you be more than one type as well? Exactly. That's what I'm wondering now as well. I think Mm. that's the thing as well. Back in the day when people were doing this kind of research and especially looking at personality and stuff, it's kind of looking at psychology, isn't it? 
why you do or act a certain way and bef- like that's actually one of the hardest things to measure because when you think about what we do in the lab oh, I want to measure the concentration of a metabolite in plasma you can actually quantify that exactly. whereas trying to study someone's personality that's more tricky it's forever changing uh, metabolite is definitive yeah. whereas in like I don't know someone's mood would be significantly different on a Monday and a Friday yeah. for example and does society impact our personality maybe a hundred years ago yeah people's personalities would be different to definitely and no? I don't know I think it would be and even lately there's a lot of studies that show that people's personalities and their behaviors even the way they talk has been influenced by the people that have been surround that surround you every day in fact um Going back, I think it was on the news, people were saying that kids, when they were going back to school now, they had slightly different um, accents and the way they talk was different because they weren't around their usual peers. They were surrounded by parents and family because of the COVID lockdown. So people came back and probably they would um, observe a change. In- so essentially, it's important to note that even though the MBTI is popular, there are limitations because, you know, we're looking at things, as you said, in a very black and white category. You're either an introvert or an extrovert. You're either a judger or a feeler. And really, this is a shortcoming because, as we just mentioned, people don't fall neatly into two categories, you know, on any personality dimension, depending on a lot of other factors. Assessing only four aspects of personality, you could be missing out on a whole heap of others. Like, who's to say there's only four aspects, you know? Maybe there is at least five or more major personality dimensions, which actually more recent evidence of research has shown that there are actually about five or six. Um, One of those dimensions, for example, in the latest research, cites how honest and humble someone is versus how deceitful and conceited someone is, which is actually not taken into consideration in the MBTI personality tests. Mm -hmm. But in terms of benefits, it's not an entirely useless test. People are drawn to these particular tests out of a desire to further understand themselves, which is, I mean, I I like knowing more about myself. And then when I read the results, I'm like, this is so me. (laughs) And I know a lot of jobs, or maybe not a lot, but some jobs require you to do some sort of personality test before you get hired just to see how good of a fit you might be i've heard that Have you yeah heard that? i've heard that i think yeah compatibility with the job but may also be with your colleagues as well i yeah. think just for a well-oiled machine so ultimately it's not the mbti label but the power of introspection that drives the insights and sometimes fuels our motivation to take steps to change one's condition definitely all right so um we're actually going to do the test it'll be interesting to see whether i get the same result So Ben, let's go through the test and read a question out as we answer on the scale. First First question. question. We have different first questions. Oh, do we really? (laughs) Okay, it must be um, on shuffle or something. Mm. Yeah, okay. So I'll read mine out first and pick my answer and then you can... This is actually good. So we we can't influence each other. Exactly. So my first question is, you make friends, well, it's not really a question, it's a statement. You you make friends easily, and then it's got agree and disagree, and I kind of pick where I fall on that scale. You've got five sort of shades in between Yeah, there. I think I do. Yeah, you do. You're pretty, oh, actually, I, I shouldn't be saying, yeah, I shouldn't don't be commenting. Me. How nah. about you? What's your first question? You enjoy vibrant social events with lots of people. <laughs> Yeah, that, that laugh speaks volumes. Hey? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> this will influence your result. No, I already know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm probably going to go with like just the, the dot before the most dis- strong okay. disagree. My second statement is what it means to lead a good life is a question that you return to again and again. Oh my God, 100%. It's like this existential crisis that I have. What does it mean to live a good life? What What do I want out of my life? How can I make the most of it? I feel like that's an episode in itself. We could just yeah. We could talk about Quarter that for some crisis. time. I've got my question is: You often spend time exploring unrealistic yet intriguing ideas. I've, I've got to say that that kind of is me. Is I, that I, you? Yeah, like I just find myself pondering and wondering: What if you know? What if that could happen? What if, say, for example, in the, in the lab, if something goes wrong? Oh, mm. it's kind of like a massive segue that has nothing to do with my project. But I'm like. Thinking and thinking. I'm still thinking about it. So my next one is seeing other people cry can easily make you feel like you want to cry too. Yeah. 
Really? Yeah, because every time I watch movies and then people start crying and I always feel like teary as well, <laughs> even though I know it's not real. Mine is uh, your travel plans are more likely to look like a rough list of ideas than a detailed itinerary. I feel like that kind of varies. Like I'll have a list of where I want to go and I might say I'll be here. Say it was an international trip. I'd be like, I want to be here one day. I'll leave on like the Friday. And I'll go there somewhere else on a Saturday on a Monday. But then is it like... I might have a list of things. Like a but, list yeah. of places you want to go put into different days. Or is it like at one o'clock, I'm going to get up and have breakfast. Sorry, at nine o'clock, <laughs> I'm going to get up, have breakfast. Um, in the morning, we're going to make our way to the market. And then from the market, we're going to head to the next destination. We're going to have dinner at nine. I already have a restaurant in mind. Oh, my then, goodness. No, I'm not that person. I'm so like, would you say like a like a rough list of ideas or a detailed itinerary? I'd have a, a rough list. But maybe I might be like, I want to do this on that day. So uh, I'm just picking the ones before the biggest bowl. <laughs> I feel like that is already a limitation in itself because some people actually research estrogen when they're doing a survey, mm. they feel weird or something about picking the most extreme okay. options. So they always fall in the second last or the second yeah. most categories as well, which is I think what's happening to you. I know, but out of that comment, I just picked the biggest degree. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See, I don't know whether that's influencing the result then. Yeah. My next one is you always do your best to prepare for potential obstacles in advance. That is so me. I'm yeah, like the worst case scenario person. So I always think about the worst things that could possibly happen and have a plan in place in case those things do happen. Yeah. This is this is kind of scary. It's reading my mind. You often think about what you should have said in a conversation long after it's taken place. Yeah, like 100% I feel like we're down. that kind of people. Yeah. Like Even yesterday, like the other day after recording an episode, I was just like, man, I wanted to say that so badly. But by the time I was like, could get that no, comment No, don't put that kind of like, pressure nah, on yourself. Nah. But I'm the same. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a conversation and be like, why did I say that? Or why didn't I say that? Or what did they mean when they said it like that? <laughs> why did they put their hands this particular way? Like, <laughs> My hands are on the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my next statement is, You're us- you usually stay calm even under a lot of pressure. I don't know. Ooh. I don't think I've ever been under a lot of pressure before. But I also try and not put myself in situations where I'm under pressure. So if I've got deadlines, I'll always be working bit by bit. So on the day before, I'm not manically rushing to get things done like i try and stay a few steps ahead so i've never really been under a lot of pressure but how would you say you respond to like a bit of pressure because i know you're feeling a bit of stress from your phd at the moment yeah do you think i try and stay calm though i think you stay calm do i have moments where i freak out you have moments when you freak out but i (laughs) i think i agree like i'm usually calm I wouldn't, yeah. Maybe in my mind. I think I keep it more in my mind. Like I might chat with you, get a bit Mm. of a pep talk, but then I'd constantly be worrying about things in my head. But I don't think I project that outwards. Even at work, while I was working, um, for example, I worked at 7-Eleven, which is a perfect example, actually, because you're actually on your own working at a service station and you have to multitask and there are jobs that you have to do on your own and then customers would come and you have to rush around in between cleaning coffee machines, serving people for fuel, making sure they're not driving away with that petrol, making sure that everything's stocked, everything's clean and making pastries and stuff and making sure that you take off because they only stay good after you cook them for I think like eight hours or so. If they pass eight hour mark, you actually have to, if nobody buys them, you actually have to throw them away. So you're constantly checking for that as well. When the next cycle of putting on hot pastries on would be so i think that was high pressure but i think i handled that quite well too okay. Okay. So i want to say yes i usually stay calm even under a lot of pressure but i won't pick the biggest bubble okay uh, that's what i was thinking you'd fall somewhere like in that one second or third notch before oh i don't know now i want to uh, change my answer <laughs> <laughs> it's too late for that too late okay what's your next one if your friend is sad about something your first instinct is to support them emotionally not to solve their problem i don't know do you listen and offer emotional support or do you try and cheer them up by going, okay, we need a game plan. This is what you're going to do. I think I, I come up with a game plan, but I don't spit it out straight away. I think it's a bit of a blend. I might have some emotional support, but then I'll hit them with a strategy. I'm such a problem <laughs> solver though, because like you're sad, yes, but yeah, focus on moving forward. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to disagree. Uh, I'll probably. So you support them emotionally. But then I'll try to solve their problem. Not so you would disagree. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Okay. Like but which smallest, bubble? The but the smallest. Or maybe I could be in the middle. I don't know. I feel like the middle one is. I don't know. So I just close my eyes and just go. No, no, no. <laughs> think about it. Look inwards. 
If your friend is sad about something, your friend, your first instinct is to support them emotionally and not to solve their problem. Depends on the friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could always pick the middle if you really can't pick. I can't pick. Because it sounds like you do both at the same time. You offer advice. I know with our pep talks, because I'm the kind of person that needs a game plan, you would support me emotionally and listen, but then you would be like, what are you going to do about it? Mm. What's the plan? Yeah. Okay. Which is what works for me. It may not work for the next sad friend that comes to you. So maybe keep that in mind. Exactly. I think maybe it depends on the problem and the friend. Like you, yeah. you sort of middle you feel you feel off them and then you, I don't know, it's you like give you, them what they need. Do at the you time. want me to listen or do you want me to listen and give you advice? Exactly. Some gonna, people just want you to listen. Yeah. You might, you're not going to tell them just to zip it, sit down and listen. Well, it depends on. <laughs> depends, on no, yeah. <laughs> depends on what they're really sad about. I'm going to click the middle one. All right, my last one before I click the next button. At social events, you rarely try to meet new people and mostly talk to the ones you already know. I mean, like, I float around and say hi to acquaintances too. (laughs) But it depends. Like, am I at a really big party or am I at... Say you're at a conference. I think it depends on the mood and the day and the environment as well. Because some days I can be feeling really social and other days I'm really drained and I just can't be bothered depending on whether the event is something I'm passionate about or not. Yeah, I think I want to agree that i usually stick with people that i know but it's not that like i would still socialize so i think i'm gonna pick yeah that one for those of you listening she just picked the one to the right of the strongly agree (laughs) yeah or second biggest Uh, my my question is people can rarely upset you no people can upset me (laughs) (laughs) but to which bubble level (laughs) and how easily do they upset you because the statement specifically says rarely do they rarely upset you or do they always upset you do they medium always upset you i think i'm gonna pick the people can rarely upset you agree but the smallest agree bubble yeah okay it says that we're 10 percent through the test ben oh my goodness i think we might need to pick up the pace my next one is you are very sentimental Yes, I've kept like every single card anyone's ever given me. Oh, really? And I find it hard to delete pictures like I love. Yeah, that makes sense. I've seen how much um, storage your photos takes on your iCloud. Yeah, most of them are useless screenshots, but, but yeah, strongly agree. If you have to temporarily put your plans on hold, you make sure it is to your top priority to get back on track as soon as possible. It goes back to the initial thing. It's like you've you've already put your plans on hold, so it already wasn't a top priority. And then to say it's a top priority to get it back going again it's like where does it fall within the list but maybe it's a circumstance like for example i'll use you as an example you still haven't finished your lab work but your supervisor wants you to start writing this review for your thesis which will go towards your thesis and then you kind of had to stop lab work for a bit juggle a bit of writing and then you kind of had to go back to your lab work right yeah yeah that's i'm feeling like a solid middle all right, my next statement is, there are usually certain and specific ways you like to do things. 100%. Yes, I was going to say, if you don't click it, I will. <laughs> you really worry if you make a good impression on someone you met. Mm, yeah, oh, no, I worry. I worry. So that's like a, a disagree. Um, even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. Yes, because I'm such a warrior. Mm. Warrior, like I worry. It would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend all by yourself without feeling bored. That's like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I strongly disagree. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. Um, okay, maybe not just like randomly walking up to someone, but yeah, I'd feel pretty comfortable doing that. You're more of a detail oriented than a big picture person. I think at yeah, work, I, I focus it on the details, but then like outside, I always think about where things take me okay what do you think your answer would be i'm going in again? the middle again Cop out. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're more inclined to follow your head than your heart mm, no i'm a very emotional person and if it doesn't feel like right to me in my heart even if in my head i'm like that's the best option for you i think i would follow my heart but it's like a war that goes on between my head and my heart before i make a decision that sounds tiring. <laughs> it is. It's mentally exhausting. Um, you have a careful and meth- method- methodical approach to life. Yeah. You rarely worry about whether you make a good impression on people you meet. This is the first yeah. double up we've had. 
Um, yeah, I, I do worry. So it's going to be a disagree, but I don't think about it that much. Um, when looking for a movie to watch, you can spend ages browsing the catalogue. <laughs> that ain't all of us <laughs> during lockdown on Netflix. <laughs> that is so true. But then I feel like I have go-tos where I'm just like, no, I, can't, I just can't. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll go like a second biggest degree. You're prone to worrying that things will take a turn for the worse. Oh, <laughs> I wonder who this is. <laughs> Uh, when you sleep, your dreams tend to be bizarre and f- fantastical. I'll, I'll go with small agree. You avoid leadership roles in group settings. Mm, no, I like honestly can't help myself. I feel like I have to take charge because I have a vision for what the group needs to accomplish. <laughs> um, your way of the highway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm that person. Um, in your opinion, it is sometimes okay to step on others to get ahead in life. Whoa. That got dark real quick. Um, I wasn't ready for that. No, I don't, I don't think that's... No. You're definitely not an artistic type of person. I'm not very creative in the sense that I'm not an artist. Like, I don't draw. Like, I can't draw. I consider myself artistic in different ways. Like, I feel like writing. And is this podcast not art? Yeah, no, that's true. It's not too late to change your answer. <laughs> If you made a mistake, you tend to start doubting yourself, your abilities or your knowledge. Yeah, I've got to strongly agree with that. Strongly agree. You prefer to do your chores before allowing yourself to relax. Oh, my God, this is so me. Um, my mum is the complete opposite, though. I'm like, how can you sit there when, you know, you've cooked, you have dishes in the sink, you're sitting down enjoying TV going, I'll do it later. But in my head, I'm like, no, I need to clean up and then I can sit in peace. So 100% <laughs> Okay. You usually lose interest in a discussion when it gets philosophical. I strongly disagree. Frequent alone time is a necessity for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you feel more drawn to places with a bustling and busy atmosphere than to more quiet and intimate ones. Sometimes when I'm writing, I like a bustling cafe. But then if I'm like going out and going somewhere where there's a lot of people, then I might not like it. But how about the first four words? You feel more drawn yeah no i don't (laughs) you often end up doing things at the last possible moment i completely disagree with that you cannot imagine you yourself dedicating your life to the study of something that you cannot see touch or experience (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna disagree with that (laughs) you usually prefer to be around others rather than on your own i don't want to offend you (laughs) i'd rather be on my own um, um i yeah i think it just depends but i think i'd mostly rather always prefer to be on my own okay and that's all from me i'll see you guys <laughs> okay, next week this podcast is over. <laughs> you often make decisions on a whim disagree you find it easy to empathize with a person whose experiences are very different from yours yes the time you spend by yourself often ends up being more interesting and satisfying than the time you spend with other people don't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll go my degree. <laughs> you usually postpone finalizing decisions for as long as possible. Like this decision? <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to like disagree only because, but then I always want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing, speaking to the right people to make that decision, having that war with my head and my heart. So I always want to make sure. That okay. you're well informed. Yeah, maybe kind of, it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. You often put special effort into interpreting the real meaning or the message of a song or a movie. I'm, I'm going to go a small disagree. You really second guess the choices that you have made. Disagree, small. You always know exactly what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's surely the biggest disagree. No, no, don't let me influence you. <laughs> After a long and exhausting week, a lively social event is just what you need. (laughs) Mate, if I've just had a long and exhausting week, I will be at home. You rarely think back on the choices you made and wonder what you could have done differently. No, I don't disagree with that. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. Yes, I do. When in a public place, you usually stick to a quieter and less crowded area. Yes, agree. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. I disagree. You tend to focus on present realities rather than p- future possibilities. Yeah, that's true. You like to have a to-do list for each day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. I disagree. I, th- I think I have pretty good handle yeah pretty good handle you rarely feel insecure Mm, 
Disagree. When starting work on a project, you prefer to make as many decisions up front as possible. Yeah, that would be good. You can spend entire weekends all by yourself without feeling bored. <laughs> mm, yes, I can. When you know someone thinks highly of you, you also wonder how long it will be until they become disappointed in you. Whoa. Deep. That, that took a turn. Oh, I'm going to disagree because I have not thought about that. Really? <laughs> you spend time and effort trying to understand views and positions that are very different from your own. Agree. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. I wouldn't disagree with that. <laughs> so like the uh, opposite of my answer. <laughs> someone I find interesting, though. It has to be something I'm really interested in, though. <laughs> like, a, like a solid 10 out of 10. So maybe I'll, I'll just go the smallest. If your plans are interrupted, your top priority is to get them back on track as soon as possible. Yeah. You look after yourself first and others come in second. <laughs> I guess that's a, a yes, but yeah, I don't know, maybe a small one. I have kind of skipped a few, um, but in the interest of time. Okay. You take great care not to make people feel foolish when you're explaining something. Yes, of course, you don't want to make them feel bad. When you have planned a particular daily routine, you usually just end up doing what you feel like at any given moment. Oh, small disagree. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy rather than organized and consistent efforts. Yes. Because like when we when I have this massive burst of energy to go and recruit, you would egg me on and be like, yeah, go, go while you're feeling while you're on that high wave. Yeah. Because when I'm like on that low wave, I can't have consistent effort. <laughs> so yes, agree. Okay. You have got detailed education or career development plans stretching several years into the future. Oh, I've got to agree. You would love a job that requires you to work alone most <laughs> of the time. Um, I think I would get really bored, even though I like to be by myself. I think at work you'd kind of want to be... So I think I would small disagree. Okay. You rarely dwell on your regrets. No, I, oh, sometimes I have... No, I, I rarely dwell. You often feel overwhelmed. Second smallest degree. Spending time in a dynamic atmosphere with lots of people around quickly makes you feel drained and in need of a getaway. I gotta strongly agree with that. You feel more drawn to places with busy, bustling atmospheres than quiet, intimate places. I think you had that. Do you remember what you put? Quiet. Really? I'm the exact opposite. Like, give me a crazy hustle bustle city. Wow. I would just go in there, and, like, explore. <laughs> I just love that energy. Okay, okay. Agree. Uh, you find it easy to empathize with a person who has gone through something you never have. Somewhat. You struggle with deadlines. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> I like deadlines. <laughs> Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy rather than organizing consistent efforts. Yeah, I've got to agree with that. Strongly I think, agree. I think this is the last page for me, Ben. I think I skipped a few. I'm on 90%. I'm on 100. Oh. So I'll see my result. You keep going and read your answers out. Okay. Your emotions control you more than you control them. Um, I small agree. After a long and exhausting week, a fun party is just what you need. And I strongly disagree. You frequently find yourself wondering how technological advancement could change everyday life. Yes, 100%. Strongly agree. You also consider how your actions might affect other people before doing something. Strongly agree. You still honor the commitments you have made, even if you have a change of heart. Strongly agree. You rarely feel insecure. That's like a second strongest disagree. Let's see result. So I'll share my results. So remember how I told you I've ha I had done this. This is my fourth time doing this test. The first time that I did it, I got ENFJ. The second time I did it, I got ENFJ. The third time I did it, I got INFJ. And the fourth time I did it, which is today, I got ENFJ. So really the only thing that's changed is how introverted or extroverted I'm feeling. So I think today I felt a little bit more extroverted than usual in my answers. So it came out ENFJ, but I actually relate more to being an INFJ, just putting that out there, which is exactly what you got. <laughs> yep. We have the exact same personality type. Oh dear, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I wish I could remember what I got before. We so, only had a few overlapping questions yeah, as well. Yeah, that's interesting. So then maybe we did get the full 93 questions as well because there was quite a few questions there. Mm. So basically the results come out and it gives you the letters 
and it tells you what your personality personality type is. So mine says protagonist, ENFJ. I'm an advocate. INFJ slash T. Um, and then it gives you a list of stats based on, I think, your answers. One, two, three. There are five things that it rates you on. Your mind, which is what determines how we interact with our environment. So I'm 58% extroverted. So I can see how that might fall into the INFJ sometimes because it's so close to 50%. Yeah. But I guess, is it a testament to the test that I've gotten the exact same NFJ each time? Just the E and the I change? Uh, I think it is. I don't know. Yeah. So yours is <laughs> <laughs> you're 76% introverted. That's pretty solid. Solid. <laughs> uh, the um, next one is energy. This trait shows where we direct our mental energy. Uh, I got a 62% intuitive. I'm 73% intuitive. Mm. I'm 11% more intuitive than you. <laughs> I'm 11% more observant than you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That means I'm intuitive, but I'm not observant, which is actually true. I don't, I don't notice things. The third trait is nature, and that determines how we make our decisions and cope with our emotions. Interestingly, we're both 60... I'm 67% more towards feeling. I'm 72% more feeling, which is weird because I remember an, an, a question was asking if I'm head over heart and I said head, but I've still got, I had a higher, I have a higher feeling than it you. It probably depended on like other questions as well, not yeah. just the one. I know, I know, but it's just. It's interesting. Uh, yeah. The fourth trait. Is tactics. This trait reflects our approach to work, planning and decision making. I'm 74% by judgment rather than prospect. Uh, 58% judging, 42% prospect. And lastly is the, our identity. This trait underpins all others, showing how confident we are in our abilities and decisions, <laughs> which we clearly aren't because the T stands for turbulent, which yes. means we're constantly like in our head worrying about the choices and decisions and emotions that we have. I'm 71% turbulent. 61% turbulent. Damn, but that fits me so well. Yeah. There are a couple of other things as well. They give you like a whole um, paragraph, introduction, you know, your strengths and your weaknesses as well. So apparently one of my strengths is that I'm tolerant. I'm also reliable, charismatic, altruistic, and a natural leader. <laughs> <laughs> but some of my weaknesses are that I'm overly idealistic. I'm too selfless, too sensitive. I have fluctuating self-esteem and I struggle to make tough decisions. Lord, mm. if that ain't me, mm. what are your strengths and weaknesses? I'm creative, insightful, principled, uh, very passionate, altruistic. Some of my weaknesses, I'm sensitive to criticism, reluctant to open up. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I avoid the ordinary and I'm prone to burnout. Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you there now? <laughs> um, and then it tells you a little bit about your friendships, what your parenthood style would be like, what your romantic relationships would be like. Career um, paths as well. Yeah, that's interesting. There's, there's a lot of information there. Definitely. I wonder how me it is. It kind of seems to be. Apparently some careers that fit my personal personality type, including social work, religious work, teaching, surprisingly hey. or unsurprisingly, unsurprisingly, counseling and advising of all sorts are popular avenues. This attitude alongside their social skills, emotional intelligence and tendency to be quote unquote, that person who knows everybody. I swear sometimes my friends say that about me. You literally know everyone. Like we would walk around uni and I'd like wave to a few people that I know. They're like, who are they? Like, how do you know everyone? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. No, I've been, I walked around a little bit with you before and you've known a lot of people. Really? Like a local celebrity. No, come on. <laughs> I have some specific needs when it comes to a satisfying work environment. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Sounds stressful. Maybe that's why um, <laughs> workplaces want people to do this test because they see this personality type come up. They're like, no, we ain't hiring this person. Exactly. Um, apparently, I'm a very likable person and this quality propels me to success wherever I have a chance to work with others. I myself, as an advocate, can be quite popular and well-respected. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, That's really cool. I feel like most of these things are accurate of my personality. Do yeah. you, what do you think? 
I think so. I think hit the nail on the head. Um, but at the same time, I think that... Uh, I just read, what you have read so far is just an introduction to the complex concept that is your personality type. You may have muttered, muttered to yourself, wow, this is accurate. It's a little creepy. Um, this is not a trick. You felt understood because you were. We've studied how your personality type thinks and what they do, what they need to do to reach their full potential. Wow, that's mm. literally what we were just saying. Yeah. So accurate. Um, I do agree with most of this, except I think the problem for me is depending on how I'm feeling, because you saw the results, they were very borderline introverted slash extroverted, and I've had 50%, 50% each of the four times that I've done the tests. So that's my only issue. I think it just depends on maybe the questions that you get because it's coming from a pool, but also your mood. So I think there's there's two confounding factors there which get influenced, but and getting 50-50. us doing it together is obviously not experimentally good practice. No, definitely not. Do it by yourself. <laughs> yeah, do it by yourself when you're feeling calm in an environment that you feel comfortable in. And maybe and that will help reduce some confounders. Definitely. And take your time. Consider each question and all its possibilities. Yeah. So, does your result fit you, Ben? I would say so. Yeah, pretty yeah. happy? I'm pretty happy. You're it's probably going to email those results to yourself and have a proper look at them later? or Definitely. There's a lot of reading there that, um, to do. I mean, we yeah. only just covered, we, we barely covered uh, each of those headings and there's still... So much more to look at. Yeah. So, that was really interesting. A great way to learn more about myself and, and about you, Ben. So, if our listeners are interested in trying out this MBTI personality test, um, we will supply them with the link to the free test that we took, either on our Instagram or on our um, podcast episode notes. So, look out for that and have a go and do comment. Let us know what you get. It would be interesting to know, you know, whether our groups of friends who are listening have similar personality types or whether our listeners have a large range of different personalities. Definitely. And if you've taken it before, did you get the same answer? Yeah, I'd be um, curious to know as well. I yeah. can't be the only one who's borderline <laughs> intro and extroverted. Exactly. But everything else was pretty spot on with the NFJ slash T mm. sub. We have letter. some consistencies. Yeah. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. If you'd like to try the test, we'll pop the link again on wherever you can find us on social media and on our podcast episode notes. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. To make sure you don't miss out on our structured rambling, follow us on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at So You Think You Can PhD. You can also check out our website on Podpage and Anchor FM. Please rate and review the show, let us know your feedback, and if there's anything you'd like to hear on a future episode. Or even just to say, hey, we'd love to hear from you. No, 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 no. Serious inquiries only, please. Thanks again. Bye.